the new Zoom H4n includes a feature called mid-side matrixing. And that means that it has the built-in ability to take two mics in a mid-side array and turn them into two stereo tracks, left and right. Alan Blumline, a genius inventor and engineer, English by birth and nationality, invented stereophonic two-channel sound in 1931. Now, Alan Blumline figured out that you could do this with two figure eight mics in an XY pattern that is at 90 degrees with their diaphragms close together and with the subject, the, the, the source of sound, at 45 degrees to both mics. And then the difference between the mics pointing in different directions would provide the difference information to our ears and brain. So we would say, oh, that's on the left, stage left, you're right, since you're on the other side of the camera. And this is on my stage right, your left. Um, he figured out that you could, as I said, do a, a coincident XY pair of figure eight mics. And we call that today a Blumline array. But he also figured out that you could take those two mics and point one straight at the source and the other at right angles and then mathematically add the two signals in a special way and you could reproduce exactly the same effect as the crossed XY array. Nowadays we call that, well I think Alan probably called it mid-side recording. And the mid mic, as we talked about earlier, is the one that's pointing straight at the subject. It can be an omni mic, cardioid, hypercardioid, figure eight like we have here, soft cardioid, or that is say a wide cardioid, any pattern that you prefer, and you'll get a different effect. You'll get more or less room sound and a more or less focused on the subject, on the, on the uh, mid subject. The side mic, the mic that's pointed at 90 degrees to mid mic, must be a figure eight and or bi-directional mic. And it should be one of good quality. That is to say, the pickup should be the same from both directions. Some figure eight mics pick up frequencies differently on one side or the other. So for this to work properly, the figure eight pattern needs to be the same in both directions. The null or, or position of minimum pickup should be nice and even and strong. And in general, the frequency response throughout the pickup pattern should be even. There's always going to be, it's going to drop off in the null in this, in this straight at me, 90 degrees to the diaphragms. But it should drop off evenly at all the different frequencies. Hopefully these road mics are good enough to do that job. Uh, the fact that they're switchable makes it easy to to play around with different kinds of stereo miking patterns. But today we're using them both in figure eight in a mid-side pattern and uh, so we're, excuse me, we are replicating after this has been decoded we will have the same effect as if we had built a Blumline array. Let's have a couple of demonstrations. Um, how about everybody's favorite noisemaker, bubble wrap. So if I position the bubble wrap way over here to your right, stage left, my left, and then bring it to the middle, and uh, or if we lean way over this way and uh, it's my stage right, you, to you it should be the left. Now, did you, did you hear the sound move from over there to over there to over there? I hope you did. Um, a great thing about mid-side miking 
but also true of other coincident miking patterns where the where the mic diaphragms are close together is that if your if your performance gets converted to mono for instance old television or uh, whatever reason it gets turned into mono instead of stereo it will collapse to mono without sounding nasty there won't be cancellations and and frequency response problems and phasing noises so mid-side recording is uh, is popular in situations where you, they might get collapsed to mono anyway let's hear how the lovely Kathy Winger at Model E sounds recorded in this mid-side configuration using the Zoom H4N. So there we are in mid-side. Now, the interesting thing about mid-side recording and Blumline recording, if we're using figure eights, is that all we have to do is turn the mics 45 degrees and change the uh, configuration of the preamp so it's not decoding mid-side. And we'll go to a Blumline array. We'll record both channels evenly without decoding and we should have the same stereo effect. Let's try. So, well, this is gonna, I'll have to mute this, I guess. But all we do is pick it up and turn it. So instead of the mid mic pointing straight at me now, it's at a 45 degree angle, and so is the side mic. They're now both 45 degrees away from me, and I'm sort of in the middle of that 45 degree angle. So let's try the bubble rat test. Oh, we'd better switch off the mid side decoder in the Zoom H4N. So now we've moved the mics and we've switched off the mid side matrix, matrixing in the Zoom H4N. So now we're, we're recording with a Blumline array, even though we're using the same mics configured in exactly the same way by changing the way they point at the subject and the way we handle the signals, we've changed the, the microphone technique that we're using. So back to the bubble wrap. If you, uh, if you have somebody to play a trick on, have them come on and watch the recording and see if they jump when the bubble wrap goes off. So there's stage, uh, stage left, your right. Here we are in the center. Now I didn't kill myself to get this lined up exactly, so I may not be dead center. And now stage right, your left. And uh, another little musical interlude from the Winger Model E cutaway. Oh. I'm going to be going down to see Kathy next week, play a house concert at her house. Mm -hmm.